Good morning and welcome to worship. Though it isn't exactly how we expected it would be, we are glad to be together for worship in this way. And I want to offer a special thank you to all of our worship staff who quickly were able to rise to the occasion once again and make this possible. Dear friends, let us join our hearts and worship God on this Epiphany Sunday. Good morning, Allisonville Christian Church, and welcome to all our visitors. Here are the announcements for the week of January 2nd, 2022. Please be aware that the church office will reopen tomorrow, January 3rd, and both Diane and Josh will be returning from vacation as well. Because of the holidays, the men's breakfast will meet this coming Saturday, January 8th, and Food Pantry Sunday will be next Sunday, January 9th. This coming Saturday is also our annual Christmas undecorating party. All are welcome to come help us put away the Christmas decorations until next year and tidy up the church for our return to worship. In preparation for our eventual return to two services, we're in need of volunteers to help with our swim team, the Sunday Walking Inside Ministry team. If you might be interested in participating, see the weekly newsletter for more information and a link to register as a volunteer. We're also in need of people to help provide lunches for the youth group meetings this semester, as well as worship and wonder and exploring worship volunteers. There are lots of opportunities to get involved with ministries here at Allisonville, so check the weekly newsletter for more information. Altar flowers this week are provided by Sue Hannah in celebration of the life of Art Hannah. There is always something happening in our community and so many ways to get involved that we couldn't include at all like the ongoing grief discussion group and the next book club meeting. Keep an eye on our weekly newsletter for the latest information, and you can also find more at Allisonville's Facebook page or visit our website at allisonville.org.
I invite you now to center your hearts and minds and spirits as we listen to this morning's call to worship. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for God alone does wondrous things for all of God's people. Blessed be God's name forever, and may God's glory fill the whole earth forever and ever. Amen. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Listen now to what we say. News, news, Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in a manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you hear of endless bliss. Joy, joy, Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the grave. Peace, peace. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all. To gain the everlasting call, Christ was born to save, Christ was born to save. Hi friends, good morning, I'm so happy to see you this morning. And on this morning, we are celebrating Epiphany. Now, Epiphany won't happen until January 6th, but this morning we're celebrating it in worship. And so what even is Epiphany, right? Well, Epiphany is the story of three wise ones who were paying attention. They were looking up at the stars up in the sky and they noticed there was this big, bright, shining star. And they decided that they should go and follow that star. They knew that that had to be a special message from God. And so they traveled and traveled and traveled and traveled and traveled until they came to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, they started asking around, you know, we've seen the star in the sky and we believe that this is a sign of the Messiah, of the one who was born to be king of the Jewish people. And there was a pretty bad king there in Jerusalem named King Herod. And he was a little bit sneaky. And so he told the wise ones, okay, well, I want you to go and find this Messiah and then I want you to come report back to me. And the wise ones said, okay. They were still paying attention, so they could still follow the, the star in the sky. So they walked and they walked and they walked and they walked until they came to Bethlehem. And in Bethlehem, they met baby Jesus. They met baby Jesus and they brought him some wonderful gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh and they worshiped him because they knew they were paying attention and they knew that this baby was a very special baby. And then they knew too that because they were paying attention that Herod probably wasn't a very good guy and so they left and went home another way so that they didn't tell Herod 
about this baby. You know, I really like the story of the Magi. I really like the story of the wise ones. They're called many different things. Magi, wise ones, wise men sometimes. And these wise ones, I really like this, this story because they remind us to pay attention. That if we pay attention to the things that God is doing and we listen to God and we look for God in our lives and we follow God, then some really cool things can happen. And we can have some amazing things um, happen in our lives. And so I think that is a good reminder for us as we start this new year, this year of 2022, to be listening and watching for God's presence in our lives and to share those good things with others. Well, let's pray together. God, thank you so much for the message of the wise ones and help us to be wise ones too listening and paying attention to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Allisonville. As we enter into a spirit of prayer this morning, may we lift up the joys and the concerns of our congregation. This morning we celebrate the new year, so happy new year to all of y'all. And we pray and hope for good things to come this year. And as we turn to our concerns, this morning we pray for the Tuttle family as Emmeline has been diagnosed with COVID. We pray for a smooth recovery for her and for health for all of them as well. We also lift up in prayer Chris Higgins' dad, Jeff Higgins, who is also dealing with COVID right now. We pray for a healthy recovery for him as well. This morning we surround in prayer Dottie Lloyd, who is recovering from a fall. We also hold in prayer Janet Spaulding's dad, Rick, who has been hospitalized again. We pray for Everett Gassaway this morning, who is in the VA hospital. We also pray for Sharon Gassaway's grandson, Kyle Smith, who is also in the hospital. And this morning, we continue to pray for Joyce Jones' brother, Jack, Judy Snap, Troy Snap's stepmom, Ben Hinton, Karen Campbell, Wilma Emick, Will Smith, who is Tom Kane's nephew, Rod Usher's sister, Martha, Matt Orth, Carol Lou Knox, Diana Moore, Melinda Maines' father, Don Maines, Bob Pessong, Davis Goforth, Audrey Pelser's mother, Lee Redu, David Parker, who is a friend of the Lawrence's, Nick Keltner, Jackie Kramer, Joey Lee, Linda Styers, Dan Dunn, and Mac Hunter. This morning, we also pray in this new year for all who are grieving all who continue to be affected by COVID, and for our work and all work to be an anti-racist church and people. And this morning, our Global Ministries prayer partner is Israel-Palestine. We pray specifically for our Global Missions co-worker there, Shelby Perez, who serves with the Dialogue and Interreligious Engagement Center in Ramallah, Palestine, of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem. So friends, with all that was shared, and all that we carry within the depths of our hearts. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, we are grateful for your light and for your love that knows no end. As this new year begins, we pray that we always notice your presence with us, guiding us and leading us on the way through whatever 2022 brings for each of us. As we close the door on 2021, we all reflect on it in different ways. For many, we face life changes for better or for worse. New jobs, moving, losses, births, weddings, and more. Some look back on this past year with joy, others with heartache, grief, others gratitude, and others something else. For all these feelings and more, we lift them to you and entrust them to you. And we pray that you meet us here wherever we are and with however we feel as we begin a new year of our journeys on earth. You have called and named each and every one of us. You know us and you love us beyond words. And you have a call and purpose for each of us, for each of your people. May we always find you and may we always find our call. May you lead the way and may we walk the path with gentle, loving steps, embodying your love and your grace day in and day out. 
May we remember the words of your son, Jesus the Christ, following in his footsteps to be his hands and feet on earth as we continue rejoicing in his birth. We pray these things in his name as we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Visit of the Wise Men In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring me word so that I may go also and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
We're celebrating the Epiphany of the Lord today. Though Epiphany officially falls on January 6th each year, at the end of the 12 days of Christmas. Both a day and a season that goes until Ash Wednesday, that word epiphany means to make known or to reveal. In this case, the epiphany is the good news of the birth of the Christ child. And through this whole season, we hear passages of scripture that shed light on God's work in the world. In today's well-known story, God's action is made known by the light of a star. Every year at this time, here in our part of the world, we can all use a little more light, can't we? Not only that, but this year again, COVID is restricting our movements and our activities. And perhaps for us at ACC, we are hoping for light to light our way as we prepare to depart from one another as pastor and people. Light to go ahead of us as we all continue on the journey of faith. So far this Advent and Christmas season, we've spent time in the world of Luke's gospel, where in the opening chapters we do meet some angels, but also a fair number of regular folk. People like Mary and Joseph and those shepherds out under the stars. But now moving to Matthew's story, we encounter people of rank and prominence. Herod the king, for instance, and the chief priests and the scribes who were among the powerful of Jerusalem. And then we meet the wise men, as the NRSV calls them. Fascinating but mysterious people in this birth story. Variously called wise men, kings, and magi, they were no doubt scholars of the stars and perhaps interpreters of dreams. Well educated, they were scientists of their time, these magi who watched the skies and studied the stars. People have long been captivated by them and many legends have grown up around them. For instance, they have been given names which aren't in the Bible story, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. And in some portrayals, they're assigned ethnic identities too. Melchior as European, Balthazar as African, and Caspar as Asian. Whoever they were, these wise ones are an important part of the nativity story because they represent those who are open to God's Spirit. And they represent all the non-Jews or Gentiles whose lives were touched by Jesus, even from the very beginning. You know, people like us. Scholar Beverly Gaventa writes that, in a sense, the wise men pave the way for the command that the risen Christ gives to the 11 at the very end of Matthew's gospel when he tells them to make disciples of all nations. It is clear in the gospels, even from this birth story, that people from all walks of life, from kings and priests to shepherds, are attracted to and affected by Jesus. People, from a wide array of places and faiths and races. When the wise men showed up in Jerusalem, asking, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? That question set Herod and the powers that be on their collective ear. We saw his star at its rising, they said, and we have come to pay homage to him. Weren't they something? To be so taken with a star in the sky that they packed up their camels? Well, okay, we don't know that they rode camels, but it's a good detail, right? Packed up their camels and started off to go who knows where, following a light in the sky. I've long been intrigued by these wise ones. First, that they were paying such close attention to the sky that they noticed something different when it happened, noticed it immediately. That a star at its rising that so caught their attention. 
though that was their business, apparently, to read the heavens, always watching for anything that might offer meaning. It's true that we also have to be watching if we hope to notice when God acts around us, watching all the time in the midst of our many distractions, so we don't miss God's spirit in motion, so we don't miss an invitation. The Magi noticed and sprang into action in what was an act of faith, to be sure. How often are we ready to spring into action, to follow a star or hear a still small voice or notice and then respond to a nudge of the spirit? We are facing a moment to pause and notice what is going on around us, aren't we? And when I say we, I mean you, the congregation, and me, your pastor, who loves you dearly. Because we will soon begin following different routes on faith's journey, won't we? And that is, for many of us, kind of scary or unsettling or sad or even puzzling. What will it be like, we wonder? How will we know which way to go? This story of the wise ones and the star comes at a perfect time in our life together to remind us of the many ways in which God works and leads and guides. When King Herod heard the news of the newborn king, he sent for the priests and the scribes who knew all the prophecies about the Messiah to ask where this child was to be born. In Bethlehem, they answered, for it was written, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. As soon as they heard it, Herod secretly called the wise men back and asked them all about the star's appearance. And then he sent them on their way to find that child, saying, When you have found him, Bring me word, so I can go too and pay him homage. The travelers set out and saw the star going ahead of them until it stopped over the house where they found Mary and the child. Kneeling before him, they paid homage to him, and opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Just imagine that moment. Such a long way they've come from the east, Persia perhaps, encountering political intrigue and who knows what else all the way on that journey. But all the way they kept their eyes on the star that led them finally into the presence of the child who will become a shepherd king. Finally, as Matthew tells it, having been warned in a dream not to return to Jerusalem and to Herod, the wise men departed for their own country by another way. Another way, an unknown way. The writer, singer James Taylor, who I love, wrote a song on this text called Home by Another Way that says in part, Those magic men, the magi, some people call them wise or even kings, well, anyway, those guys, they visited with Jesus. They sure enjoyed their stay. Then warned in a dream of King Herod's scheme, they went home by another way. Yes, they went home by another way, home by another way. We can make it another way, safe home, as they used to say. Keep a weather eye to the chart on high and go home by another way. We got this far to a lucky star, but tomorrow is another day. We can make it another way, safe home, as they used to say. Keep a weather eye to the chart on high and go home another way. When the wise men or those guys, as James Taylor calls them, had that dream to go home by another way, they did not balk. They did not grumble or worry. What? We finally figured out the way and now we have to go find a new way? No, 
They trusted the dream and they struck out on a new path because they knew that so far they had been shown the way all along and they trusted that guidance would continue to take them the right way. Though there's not talk of a star on the way home, no promise of a star in the sky to guide us, but like the wise ones, we too can trust that the one who calls us and claims us and sends us out to make God's love known will take us on. The one who sends us out to reveal the love made known in the Christ child will continue to show us the way in epiphany and every day of our lives on this journey of faith. As our ways soon part, we may trust that God will lead us always in the way of love. And on this Epiphany Sunday, we give thanks to God, whoever and always leads the way for you and for me and for all who watch and listen. This Epiphany Sunday, the star of Bethlehem with its light reminds us that we are called to be light in the world, wherever we are and whatever our circumstances. We can continue to be light in the world through our offerings. We give thanks to God for the many opportunities we have to share what we have with others, to share the gospel, 
to share a bite of bread, to share our love. So I invite you to give today, whether online or by sending in an offering through the mail. We ask God's blessing now on all our gifts. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, we do ask that you will help us continue to be light in the world. We ask that you will bless all of the gifts that are given today and this week, that each one will go forth into the world to be love in the world in the way you have called it. In Christ's name, amen. Dear friends, each time we come to this table with its bread and its cup, we remember the one called light in the world first. And we come each time not only to remember, but to celebrate his life and death and resurrection and to be imbued anew with that light as we share the meal together that sustains us and inspires us and enlightens us. So we do remember the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples at the table when he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you, take and eat. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of many. So drink of it, all of you. Receive these good gifts of God, for you are each God's own. The living Christ is the host of this table, and it is he who invites us all to dine. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious one, for this bread and this cup, and for the life that they represent. And we do ask that you will nourish us with them, that we will be all who you call us to be, your children in the world in this moment, ready to share your love with each and all. In Christ's name, amen. Let us share the meal.
Can you hear it? The gentle voice of the Spirit. There's no reason to fear it. God's calling you to life. Just surrender. Dear friends, as in old, God always provides a light to shine and to guide the way to all who seek the Christ, all who seek God's love. So let us continue to follow the way in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of God's Holy Spirit, God will carry us through it all. Amen. Mm -hmm.